My question is, what are the biggest similarities you have with your character and what are the biggest differences? We're starting off real easy, eh? Well done. Uh, well, I don't hate the boys. <laughs> let's, just, let's just start that. Start there. And um, I, I, I think the biggest similarity is we're both very grounded people. And I, 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 I like to embody the image, when I walk in life, I like to envision, my, envision myself as like body like a mountain, heart like an ocean, mind like the sky. And that's where I think me and Billy have a lot of similarities because she's very ethereal in a way that she can, she can move through planes quite, quite smoothly and, and move into different realms and be herself and be grounded in it and not need approval or um, any, anything from anybody really. And I, I feel very similar to that. I always try and just be grounded in myself and embody as much of those qualities as I can. But I don't really hate a lot of people in my everyday life, so that's where our biggest difference is, and I think Billy's got grudges. Oh, yeah. She's got people she wants to take out, literally. Um, I think that the similarity between uh, Donna and I uh, is that she attempts to be a sunny disposition when given an opportunity to see the bright side, she will do that. I attempt to do the same. I'm aware that I have a, a large energy and I am very aware of my energy and its uh, influence on a room and I attempt to use that power for good. <laughs> um, and I think the biggest differences would be that uh, Donna has not made peace with her body and Brianna has. <laughs> Giving such deep answers. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. like Amara, think Dean is cute. <laughs> so that's easy. Unlike Amara, I do not smite people. Um, yes. At least not knowingly. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think I, I don't hold a grudge quite as long as Amara does. I don't have the energy. And that's why I think she was so pissed off for all of season 11. She was just tired. <laughs> So we're very different that way. Uh, I think both Jody and I are ve very willing to risk being hurt for love. We think love's worth it. I think that Jody tends to be very black and white thinking, whereas I make an active effort to live in shades of gray and um, and allow different perspectives to all be true. So that's it. Um, I think, uh, in terms of Meg, I, um, because I studied history so much and I like the kind of macrocosm view of, of humanity, um, we connect on that level. Like, I love that she's never phased by the small blips in life. She's like, no, well, in the grand scheme of things, that's not going to matter. Um, and I think we're similar in that way. Uh, I think we're... We're similar in our sarcasm, because I'm naturally actually very sarcastic, but I worry about hurting people's feelings. So I tend to temper it, whereas Meg doesn't have that worry. So that's a major difference. <laughs> she's she's not, not faced by that. Um, and then also, uh, she kills more people than I do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Brianna, can I have some of your energy? Not today. Oh. <laughs> I send it to you. To you. It's just a lot of caffeine. That's all it is. Hello. Hi. I was like to ask, like, I got a question for all of you. Like, if you like in Supernatural, like, what, what character would you rather be than your character? Like, what characters would you rather be than your characters? Yeah, no, I like that question. Did it die? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I like to play Lucifer! Yeah. Oh, you will still hear me, motherfucker! <laughs> so I'm saying! <laughs> she is a trained actor. She knows how to project her voice. 
I want to be, I want to, since I was just talking about Dean, I want to be Dean. Because yeah. I want to know what it's like to just walk around with the superpower of being like the most handsome person on the planet. <laughs> just to like have that in your back pocket just in case. That's all. I want to be baby because I'd be in every episode. Yeah! You wouldn't have to do that much. And they'd be in you all the time. Oh, no, I would, I would love to, I, I think naturally I'm actually a lot more like Charlie. So uh, I like that character. Um, but also I think it would be fun to be cast because I am also as socially awkward. So, like, <laughs> I don't think that's true. I think you're perfect in social situations. Thank you. Um, I think I would want to be, if I could be another character, I would want to be Rowena. She's got a lot of power. A lot of power. Cute outfits. Cute outfits. Just looks great all the time. The you know? Um, I'd probably go with Rowena. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Hey, great question. Hi. 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 You guys are really inspirational, so it's just starting with that. Um, my name's Abby. Hi. Hi, Abby. Hi. So, my question is uh, particularly for Kim and Bree about uh, uh, Jody and Donna, what they have been doing when they don't have on screen time on the show, like with Alex and Claire. Even, you know, like, Amara, how was your vacation with God? Like, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that just happened, but I'm not. <laughs> Who was that in a meet and greet? Yeah, you know what we're laughing about. <laughs> well, now you gotta fill the rest of this in. Yeah, it's very dark. Is this is very dark. It's not working again. Okay. Alright, so here's, 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 the, here's the extended dance remix of what we came up with because I've had a lot of coffee but I'm still exhausted. So I said, well the reason that we were actually was not picked up is because they know, here's the secret, Jody's actually crazy. <laughs> and behind that, like, everything's cool, I guess I'm gonna Han Solo the shit because somebody else is gonna step in and help the boys, is, good night, Claire. <laughs> good night, Alex. Good night, patients. Good night, Donna. Be quiet, Donna. Shh. Stay in bed. I have room for another, Sam. Send me more children. I love them all. I'll keep them safe. The way we're movie was right here. Yeah, man. It's just such a timely question. We had made jokes about that forever, so thank you. Lovely callback. So, I, I was going to say something that feels like a really weird segue. Which was just uh, when you said that we're inspiring, I really, really want to know what's oh, you knowing that right you all inspire us on a daily basis. Life is freaking hard. It is inspiring to get up in the morning and find some kind of joy, enough to keep going. And we all need to keep inspiring each other, I think, to keep going. And you do that for me, um, and I think you do that for all of us. And I just want, I, I want to throw that back, so. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll keep you safe. <laughs> Go back to bed. <laughs> Just the idea that the boys would be so oblivious to be like, yeah, we've got a nice lady down the street, Jody Bell, good people. Like, yes. <laughs> Come to me, children. <laughs> just so creepy. And then they're just like, you're good people, children. Oh, just like, got me, got me this morning. Real good, real good. Well done. Kim Rhodes, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Ha, 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 ha. I love, I love, I love all you, you women. And then, and then, and then, and then, Kim, and then, and then, and then, and I'm sorry. You got this. Donna, and then Joe, and Joey. 
I'm 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 a last year, and I, I, it, it, it touched my my heart, and then and then in a big way. Or for for Kim, being the mom, the mom, the mom on 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 sweet on sweet life. Uh, I want I want I want to know what you you think of of, of Cole and then and, and and Dylan now and then and, and the movie Five Feet Feet Apart. Did 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 you watch it? And then what is is your feeling if if, if you did? Oh, that is so lovely. Um, I, now, to be fair, I haven't watched anything besides Good Omens in 10 years. So, I, don't, I, don't, I don't watch a lot of television because by the time my kids are in bed, I go to bed too. Uh, so I haven't seen that. But as to what my feelings about those boys are, is I am so proud and yet not at all surprised that they are such amazing individuals, like always have been. So uh, apparently my sweet spot is working with beautiful blonde brothers who turn out to be amazing human beings. <laughs> Thank you. You should you should watch you should watch you should watch that movie. It's, no, it's, it's 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 deep. I have heard and I love them. It is through no aversion, but it really genuinely is. If I have an hour and a half to spare, I will sleep. <laughs> I know, Riverdale. There was one where Dylan played a, a murderer, a psychopath. That was creepy. Yeah, I know. They're killing it. They're amazing. Hi. Um, my question is for all of you. So I know most of you have theater backgrounds. What play would you be in if you could be in any play and why? I want to play Iago. I'm just going to jump right in. Not the parrot, not the parrot, not the parrot. We established this. But I have an entire headcanon as to how Iago can be played female and justified. Like, fucking, she snaps. How many times can you avoid the best person for the promotion before she finally says, fuck this shit, you're all gonna die. I'll come watch. Yeah. I have always wanted to play uh, Mama Rose in Gypsy. Day now they'll be knocking going you can play 60 right um but uh there's uh, every time i see a show i'm like oh my god i want to be in that when i was in new york in july i saw waitress for the first time and was destroyed and brought back to life in a matter of two hours it's such a beautiful play but honestly rarely do i go and see live theater thinking meh I am always deeply moved. I always have the most incredible cathartic experience when I see live theater. Um, I love seeing all kinds of uh, mediums of art, but there's something about live theater that just moves me and changes me. Um, go see a play if you haven't seen a play. It's very important that we keep this, you know, theatrical experience alive, even though it's not on Twitter. Um, yeah, yeah, you can applaud that. Um, I, I, I love d doing theater, and I, I recently did a play called Father Comes Home from the Wars, and it's by Susan Laurie Parks, and it's a three-part trilogy, and so you, you don't know if, how she's going to write it because she hasn't finished writing everything yet, but that is a trilogy that I would love to see go all the way through, because it's just talking about the play, it, it, it deals with the issues of mental slavery, which I think you know, with the with the with the the backdrop of of the Civil War and going off and fighting for one side or the other, and what makes it so relatable is the fact that everybody is trapped in some way in their mind that makes it relevant to today. And we start the play because she asked the question, Susan Susan Laurie Parks asked the question, how did we get here as a country? And she started with 1833, 1863, and she's going to move through the time to see how all of these, how we got here, basically. And my character is a character named Penny, and she is just somebody who finds love 
no matter what. She's even at the worst of times when you have nothing. She uses her words, she uses her intention, she uses her drive to show people how she cares because she can't buy them things, she can't do things, and we got to be the play where we had no set. So you were really out there with nothing but your words, and that was how you gave, shared, expressed. And so to follow that all the way through would be a dream come true. And uh, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Um, I, I grew up in the South, and I've always had a South spot for Tennessee Williams. Yes. Um, and, I mean, it's for so many reasons, because the, the language is just oh, it's so delicious, and it's so not intellectual, and I'm a very intellectual person, which doesn't really help me much. Um, and I, but I love, too, that he's somebody who, I mean, that man had a lot of demons. And he wrote characters who have a lot of demons, but they are these people who are grabbing onto life and are fighting as hard as they can. And they're making mistakes, they're completely imperfect, they hurt each other, but there's just this, there's something about the human spirit that he captures that is so relatable, even though these characters are speaking in like much more poetic ways than anyone I encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. There's just... Um, yeah. I've done Cat, actually. Oh, yes. Yeah, I want to do Orpheus Descending. Um, I'll do any of them, though. Sweet Bird of Youth. What's the one they're reviving on Broadway right now? Is it Sweet Bird of Youth? Rose Tattoo, thank you. Marissa Tomei is doing that. Um, yeah, Tennessee Williams. The end. And, and I'm going to not answer answer in that I just love being on stage with a bunch of people who I really appreciate theater. Like we all grew up loving. Like I, it's one of my favorite experiences is going to a play. Um, and uh, the last actually uh, big production that I saw was with Lisa. Was when I saw her husband in King Lear. That was one of the best experiences I've ever had. Um, but also, I want to make another point, which is theater should be accessible. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a big problem. Even like now, we had a woman in a wheelchair win the Tony, and her theater wasn't accessible. When she went to accept the Tony, she couldn't get on stage. I mean, it, there's a lot of things that we need to start clocking in our daily experience. And, and one of the things that I have experienced is going to play is often very hard. I was lucky enough when I went with Lisa that she was helping me. So like the little porta potty that they had, because they realized, oh wait, people in wheelchairs can't get up to the bathroom, and they actually were trying, um, but it's it's a bit of a mess. So yeah. just something to be aware. Of. Um, I mean, I hate that. But I love that you brought that up. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> pardon me. Excuse me. I'll see myself. <laughs> and watching Netflix. I think I, I do have Jody superpowers. I'm Jody, that's it. I win. By the way, I think Kip is the person that if she asks you to come over to like watch Netflix and chill, she needs it. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I mean. No mixed messages there. No. Um, I don't know. But uh, this is fun. Um, but she does have skills. Um, and I just love that she's uh, respected without, um, she commands respect without demanding respect, if that makes sense. Ooh, You're like, I put that on a fucking t-shirt. Um, yeah, I think she's cool. I would love to embody a little more of that. Uh, just being, she's super grounded in kind of what she, uh, career-wise and what she has to offer in the world that way. I mean, I take out the people I didn't want. <laughs> and I bring back the ones that I did. <laughs> Very selfishly. I ignore all the rules. Um, but that's what I do. 
I would. Uh, I was just reminded because I took a picture in that lovely Impala that's out in the, on the other side of the curtains. I was reminded of, of the uh, episode where the Impala was speeding at me and I just, you know, like casually held up my hand and stopped it. I would like to have that when I'm dealing with like LA traffic. Just <laughs> kind of like make my way through and for New York, but I don't have to drive in New York. Oh. I mean, I guess while I'm crossing the street, I am a pedestrian, which is an action sport here. <laughs> so that, that's the way I guess I would apply Amara's skills very practically. I don't want to get into the business of like taking people out because then what if I said, oops. Oh, but I guess I could bring people back to life too, because I did that. Oh, that's just so complicated. That sounds so easy. a lot of work. I just want to stop traffic. That's all. <laughs> I love the fact that May never wavers, like she doesn't lose her position. And um, I think in some ways it's because of a lack of empathy, so it's not necessarily the best thing, but one of the things that I don't always love about myself is that like I fall into people. So like if I like someone that even like a friend or whatever, I it's a good thing that I'm totally with them, but on the other hand, I will lose sight of myself. Um, and I love that Meg does do that, so I feel like I have something to learn from that, and I feel like that is a superpower, to kind of not lose yourself. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> um, my question is, uh, if there was an episode where all your characters were together, what would, like, happen? <laughs> Fun would what happen. Yeah. What would happen? Awesomeness would happen. <laughs> Watch Netflix and eat pizza? Do you need to aim higher or is that... Because that sounds nice to me. I'm okay with that. You and me. Yeah. We'll, set, we'll be the B storyline. Yeah. <laughs> It'll flash back. The most exciting thing will be like, Oh, look at the toppings on this one. Uh, this yeah. is new. No, seriously, pineapple. We're gonna have a long discussion about it. Trust me. Well, and then these three are in Vegas. Time. Yes. Yeah. We'd be in Vegas. You don't want to be in Vegas. They do. They made you. Well, we could go. Amara went to Reno, so See? we could go to Reno. Yeah. I've never been to Reno. Me neither, actually. You happy about the Santa? I feel like they would lose once and they just kill a lot of them. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then yes. show you. A Meg loses everything, gets so angry, starts killing everybody, and we all gotta like get Meg to stop killing everybody. So we can repeat it in the picture. That yeah. shows up. And then Jody puts her to bed. Yeah. Forever. Meg, I'll keep you safe. Don't want to teddy bear? Did you, you want your teddy bear? Somebody please. Now write and illustrate a children's book of Jody. I know you guys have the imagination and the ability. Yes, Scout. Do it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hi there, my name is Katie. Um, uh, my question is, I'm an aspiring actor, and I'm trying really hard to like you know. You guys inspire me so much. So I guess my question is like. What inspires you guys to be your beautiful, wonderful selves? You? Like, I seriously would not step into the person I am if you guys hadn't, like, laid the table for me. It, this is, it is, I am not by nature not an asshole. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. Like, my fundamental nature is pretty selfish and fuck off. Like, I generally want to make people feel good so that I feel good. And um, and then I stepped into this fandom and you fuckers <laughs> said, or you could authentically show up as who you are and offer us that and let us love you for it. You do. That's my final answer. 
out of him. But also, let's take a moment to just quickly reflect on what Kim was saying, of the fact that when you guys show up to make us feel seen, we in turn make you feel seen, and then that cycle needs to continue outside yeah, of this room. Awesome. Right? That's how this world should work. We should all open our hearts and go, I feel seen, I feel loved, you feel seen, you feel loved. You go and pass that on, and then they'll pass that on, and then they'll pass that on. And that's so true. All, all those, the human connections that you get, that you don't even expect. I mean, holy crap, when I like agreed to come do a few episodes of the show, I had no idea the worlds that would open up and the people I would get to know and the, the I have not been in an episode with any of these actresses, but I've gotten to spend time with them and appreciate their craft and appreciate their beautiful souls and and uh, you know, we were asking about theater earlier. One of the things I love about theater is that, that you, it's all happening in real time and you can never capture that moment again. It never happens again the same way. And that, for me, is one of the most exciting things about the conventions because when we're, you know, we have fun when we're shooting stuff for you guys, but then when we actually get to meet you and get to know you and get to find out how that work impacts you and find out like how the stories continue, like Brianna was saying, that's the real rewarding thing because all the rest of it kind of just crumbles away and you lose sight of stuff, but the, the human connections that you get to make keep going. That's pretty rad. And, and, um, and, and I would say, uh, in terms of finding your inspiration, the thing about acting is it's weird that there ever became an ego thing for some people, because to me, there's no part of us that's really in the equation. It's about being fascinated by other people, wanting to tell their story, Two, uh, two others, so it's others, two others, and you're not, you're just trying to be the conduit to, to make those connections. Um, so, so I think there's, there's that kind of people and the stories that fascinate you and inspire you, and that, and you can walk and ride that way. Um, and, uh, and then also I will say you all taught me a lot about where I was off in my thinking. I had found the fact that to me it inspired me to tell strong female stories. It was one of the things that I found my, like where I found my place. I was like, okay, I can be an example to other women of something we can be that's different from what we've seen. Uh, going, you know, going back, and uh, then when I got sick, I thought, well, I'm not really an example of a strong woman, so I lost my inspiration. I didn't want to keep acting because I associated strength with physical ability. And uh, you all taught me, I was totally off on that. Um, and you all taught me what real strength is, and you taught me the importance of this story of the inner strength that we can have. And so that's why I'm out here wanting to act again. Uh, and that's completely you inspiring me. And I should say, you all in these, this group. These assholes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> and good luck. Hi ladies. Hi. Speaking of meeting everybody, me and my son almost hit you guys. We're the ones that asked. You didn't you almost hit us. Don't be dramatic. <laughs> we saw you on the sidewalk. We had like you. four inches to spare. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You are a very good driver. You yeah. needed me there. Sorry about that, yeah. Kim, Bianca, and Emily. Uh -huh. um, these studies did a great job with karaoke. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> has a disability. It's slight, but it's not noticeable, you know, physically. But I want to say thank you for inspiring if all those who are disabled that you can show them that anybody can do whatever they want as uh, uh, when, when they put their mind to it. Thank you. So thank you for having a great time. Thank you. Oh, you're sweet. Thank, thank you. Sweet. Thank you. Thanks, David. Hi. Hi. 
So my question is for all of you. Um, I love seeing um, this panel with all these like strong, confident women up here, and you guys are my role models for that. But I know that strength and confidence like that doesn't come overnight, and I still struggle with it sometimes. So what do you guys do to help build your self-confidence um, or when you're having a bad day? Yeah, I think it's important to note that I don't think you, I don't think strength and confidence is an end point. I don't think you reach it and then go, ha ha, I'm done. Got it. You Nailed know, it. it is like I'm there. And then the worst part is when you start to fall backwards and you go, oh, I'm slipping, I'm slipping, I'm slipping, and you can sense that you panic, and then you slip further, you slip further. So what I've been doing lately is when I sense myself starting to spiral in any kind of negative pattern, whether it's about a friendship, whether it's about something to do with a, my career, I, I witness the thought. I witness the negative thought and I separate it from my being. So instead of identifying with a negative thought as who I am, I witness it as something I am experiencing. And then I thank it because ultimately that experience, that feeling, is eventually there to teach us a lesson. So I wait for the lesson, I give gratitude for the lesson, and then I work my way up again. And maybe I'll get a little bit higher, uh, and then you might fall back down again. But what a glorious, confusing, complex thing it is to be, you know, as they say, a a soul having a human experience on this planet. Uh, because it is complicated, because it's continually up and down and up and down, and life is just a journey of experiences. But for me, what has really helped me in, in the last while is witnessing my negative thoughts as something that is not me, but just something I'm experiencing. Well, I think you said something so key when you said it's something you still struggle with. I think that it's something that it's it's part of, of being human. I think we all struggle with it. And I think one of the one of the lessons that I am trying to learn over and over is that I don't have to then see the struggle and like berate myself for that and feel like, ah, oh, I already learned this lesson. Why am I having to learn it again? Because sometimes, you know, you just gotta learn things again. But every experience is different. And I love what Brianna said about getting to learn from that. Um, and most of the things, like most of the really shitty times in my life, or like, you know, little things that happen day to day, like give me a few minutes of perspective or a few hours or a few years perspective, and then I do get to look back and say, oh, well if that hadn't happened, then this other amazing, oh, okay. So I think it's, it's just, it's important to let yourself not like get stuck in that and like, you know, have the spiral of judging yourself for it and thinking it's never gonna end. And, yeah, All because right. it's work. It's daily work. It's not something I don't wake up confident. I don't, actually, I don't think of myself as a particularly confident person. As my inner monologue, I tend to beat myself up. That's like my first instinct is always to find what is wrong about me. And uh, and it's actually by you know an, an analytical process that I talk myself out of that. And for me, what works is. I know ultimately what's important to me is actually the effect I create on others. And I know that it stops me from being able to be there for others if I'm totally thinking about myself. So it becomes a selfish proposition if I'm just thinking about what is wrong with me. And so the way I trick myself into what appears as confidence most of the time is that I take that moment to check and I'm like, it's not that important. It's not what really matters. What really matters is what good we do in the world. What really matters is what I'm leaving behind. And I can't do that if I'm worried about the words I'm using or the way I look or whatever it is that is making me feel not good. So uh, that helps me. And also, um, I, I will write in a journal, just stream of consciousness, and that helps me to do what Brianna is talking about too, of witnessing. It separates it from, from being, you know, me, and it becomes just a thought, and then I can kind of play with it, so. Do you, do you, want, to, do you want to do what I do right now with me? All right.
I guess a lot of times when I'm nervous, and especially like opening nights, all that stuff. So picture a line down the center of your body, and now focus on the left side of your body. Your left foot, your left shin, your left knee, your left leg, your left arm, the left side, all the left side. Now let go of that, and think of the right side of your body. Your right foot, your right shin, your right knee, your right thigh, hip, core, all the way up. And now focus on the center. Bring them together. And that feeling you get takes you out of your head and puts you back in your body. Because for me, whenever I start thinking too much, I know I have to do a, a physical exercise. And I think the biggest misconception, especially when I, and I, and I do it too, because I tell people, I'm like, breathe all the time. But I think what people forget is you don't actually breathe with your lungs and, you know, and, your, and all of that stuff. You actually breathe from your mind. Once your mind is connected to your body, you can't actually think about whatever it is that's spiraling you and be in your body at the same time, so you have to choose. So you can do that exercise anytime you want, whenever you need to feel centered again. And it's a nice way of like actually getting out of your head and into your body in a real way. You know, when that heat immediately rises and you're seeing red and you're hot, going to, let me just feel the left side of my body, let me feel the right side of my body. Okay, now bring it together and be in the center. And now start breathing and focusing on that. And I almost always feel 100% better. And that shift, in how I'm feeling is like a doorway into new thoughts. Because once I've changed my state of being, I now have access to the thoughts that are in those higher realms because I'm not dwelling or I'm not sitting in, in that pit of my stomach and feeling anxious and nervous. I'm actually in a different place. And Einstein said you can't solve the same problem with the same thinking. So you actually have to do something to change your thinking, and the only way to do that is to change how you're feeling, and the only way to change how you're feeling is to go into your body. So exercises like that are always gonna be really helpful to bring you back to your present moment, bring you back to your center, and just ground you in a real way. And so I hope that actually helps and something you can take away. Yesterday Cupcakes, today Nirvana. Thank you, Lisa Barry. <laughs> Remember when we used to talk about twa waffles? Yes. I mean, still can, still can. Chicken and twa waffles. Twa waffles forever. <laughs> and Nirvana. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, love. Hello. Hi. I kind of got a two-part first part started today, Kim and Brianna said, first I want to say, Brianna, I really love what you're doing with the No Makeup Saturdays, because as someone who never ever wore makeup, it's really helping me feel comfortable in my own skin, and I really appreciate that beyond words. And the second part of my question is, you guys all play powerful, badass women, and I just want to know what it means to you to be in a position where you can inspire other people to be the powerful, badass people. Well, I mean, I'll just say from my perspective, you know, as a black woman, be, being represented in any medium is such a gift. And any time, like any time somebody comes up to me and they like, now that I see you doing it, I think I can do it myself. Um, because I grew up in a time where there were not many people on television or in movies or on magazines who look like me and I dared to do it anyways. And um, so I know that, thank you. And so I, re I really do appreciate the opportunity that I'm given to have a platform, to be uh, on a show that has such a broad audience. And I get messages on the daily of, from people who are just like, because you're doing it, I actually feel like I can do it. And because I don't, you know, physically look like the, the women that you've seen play, play on TV because I'm tall and curvy. It's just like, who, what, what's going on? So that in and of itself, you know, that I don't look 
like everybody either is it's just it's so in like a full circle kind of inspiration so it means the world to me to get to have a, a place in this industry and to get to be somebody that you know i just played a character where i was an archaeologist and i thought to myself there's going to be a little black girl who's going to think oh i want to be an archaeologist and when I was growing up, there was nobody that looked like me playing archaeologists. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that, that really affected me and made me want to do the best job I could. And, um, and I really appreciate that opportunity that I've been given. Thanks for your question. Sorry. <laughs> I, I wanted to address the no makeup center well because there's something really amazing about these women because I am wearing makeup because of them which is an interesting thing because uh, we've had discussions for years now in green rooms and stuff but I generally like I had a lot of bad associations with makeup um, including like I had a boyfriend once who was like don't leave the house without lipstick I'm like you know like can you never do that like, you don't leave the house without <laughs> lipstick mister <laughs> That to me, and also there's so many things that mean so much more to me, um, and causes and goals and whatever. And so I didn't want to confuse priorities in my life. Of like, this is not the most important thing. But I also learned in our discussions. But yeah, you can wear makeup. It can be a self-expression. I'm never going to be able to express myself the way that these women do. Like they're they're artists with it, but I, you know, I'll put a little smudge, a little eyeshadow on. I can do that. Um, and and so I started to not think like blanket think about it. Where I I was like, no, sometimes I can wear makeup. That's okay. Um, so it's actually I want to give you the nuance of the fact that I don't, I know that it's not like just an anti-makeup sentiment. It's a like, you do you, and enjoy it, and be empowered, and also I do firmly believe, I will say, one thing I will take a stance on, is we are so powerful as women, there's so much good that we can do in the world. If we are constantly distracted by worrying about our looks, our weight, our makeup, or whatever, we will not, we're not going to get as much good done in the world. So let's go. But, but you all should speak to this more. I mean, I love it. Yeah. I love that you, you guys do that. Because I woke up late and I was like, great, this worked out just fine. <laughs> This worked out just fine. I, I, I will just add, add to what Rachel's saying is uh, the, the wearing no makeup thing was a decision that I did for personal reasons that have to do with my daughter. I won't go into the whole story of it, but basically my daughter was starting at a very young age to feel insecure about the way she looked because she couldn't wear makeup. And I was like, uh-uh, girl. And so I felt like I could do more, so I did more. Um, and that's what we would all do, right? That's what we would all do. But also, I mean, Kim and I have had the discussion a couple times where we've noticed that people have mentioned to us that they feel, um, you know, maybe a little insecure uh, when they're around people who are, you know, more adept at putting makeup on. And I, I will speak for myself, I just wanted to make it very clear that makeup is fun, makeup is a joy, it is a, it is a, it's a um, part of your self-expression. It is not who you are at your core, you know what I mean? And so if I can stand up here and be who I am at my core, you know, more physically for you, I'm more than happy to do that. Two minutes. But also, like, two minutes. Krista? We gotta get another question. That's not me saying that.
that's the schedule. <laughs> okay, don't answer if you don't have the answer. I do. So yeah, so don't tell me what to do. Is. Otherwise, we can ramble and like. Right here. No, wait, wait, wait. Do it. Crush or involvement? That was the question. So you're asking about self shipping? Yeah. 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 No, I, feel like I mean, I death is an equal opportunity. So <laughs> I think death is like everybody. I self ship everybody all the time. Yeah, yeah. I hook up with Amara. I hook up with Chuck. I hook up with Jody. I hook up with I can see everybody. All at once, it would be a free for all. Die. It could be a black widow kind of situation. Ooh, it could. I'm not tired of That's probably why I'd want to be with you, is I'm like, it could just last forever. I like that. She's so sweet, Death. I just keep bringing her back to life. You know. Like kind of the obvious, like Jody and Bobby. Oh, Bobby, that. Oh, Bobby, that. There was a weird reluctant attraction there. The question is, who does Donna have a crush on, or who do you see her hooking up with? Did you see the? Well, don't die. It's a quick jello shot in the bathroom. Um, Yes, so, John. Uh, uh, did you guys see the um, episode where they went to Donna's cabin and her, the poster was on her wall? Oh yeah, and that's so hard. And what did he say? Oh, Donna has a type. And it was just like a bunch of, like, Burt Reynoldses. <laughs> just like a bunch of, like, big, hairy dudes with mustaches and, like, um... Okay, real talk. Who would Donna be into? What character from the show? I mean, Joey. Obviously. That was where I was going. I was like, yeah. Bobby, and now that he's dead, Donna. Yeah. I think that's obvious, right? Yeah. I'd also have to hook up with Crowley because we just Woo! never got to see that again. You know, so like, let's just hook that up, lay that down. Indeed. I, I feel like it's so obvious who might want it to be with. Like, that was pretty. Okay, a kick and cast all the way, I think we're awesome. Yeah. But um, that said, like, if, if that was not a scenario, I think it's a free for all. I think it would be really cool. <laughs> it's really, it's like Baskin Robbins. But <laughs> <laughs> How do you do like, Donna? I mean, you know? Blow me up, baby. Vegas has like all the guys, right? Like that's well, it's about time to change that up, then, isn't it? That's right. I need to move forward. Hey, perfect timing. Da 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 da. Hey. Is it time to start spreading the news?
Isn't that 